Hello, and uh, welcome back to my job tutorial series. Um, as you can always see, our product from last episode. Uh, just starting up a new Java project for today's episode, episode 17, which is um, some basic I.O. streams, and of course, I.O. stands for Input Output. So I know I've been postponing all the I.O. tutorials for a while, but... And now we can finally get to them. Now again, we're just starting with our basic structures and such. So, you know, public static void main string array args. Now, since we're going to be working with um, input and output and such, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a folder. And in that folder, we will be putting some text files in. So we'll just do uh, texts. And we'll do a new untitled text file. Um, and uh, I think what we're going to put in here is just a little excerpt from a little poem, well, a, bit, um, a very nice poem that I quite fancy, which is The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. So just the first stanza of that, and this is going to be our input, so we're just going to save that right there. See, and now we have that. So now what we're going to do, the first um, object, the I mean the first uh, IO stream we're going to be dealing with is a byte stream. So uh, we're just going to import a couple things from java.io and we'll just import that to make it simple so now when you're dealing with IO um, most of your things are going to have to be encased in um, try because you're always going to have to catch the exception IO exception because you know with um, native IO every time you uh, Oh yeah, it's not being thrown yet. But you know, IO is obviously when Java interacts with the native operating system. So basically, it's handing off this order to do something to your native operating system. And so that's when Java doesn't have any idea what's going on. So in case something happens that it has no idea what happened with the IO, such as file isn't existing, then it's going to throw an error because it doesn't know what's going on. And it can't really do it itself. Uh, but I'll show you some more about, you know, file creation when we get to file I.O. But right now, the next two episodes are about the I.O. streams. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back here, and we're going to do a big file input stream equals null. So there we go. And the reason why we're setting them to null is so we don't have any errors with this. Because, you know, we have to, um, we're declaring them in here because there can be the, again, the IO exceptions when you, um, declare all the different, uh, input output things. So what we're going to do, we have to give it a string for where our um, input file is, which right now it would be texts forward slash input. And um, I'm just doing that because input doesn't have any uh, file denotation. Like normally when you're dealing with text files, it's like .txt or .rtf. But um, for some reason when you create them in Eclipse, they have no uh, format ending. And likewise, we're going to do a new file output stream and we're gonna put it around text 
output which you actually don't have yet so now we're just gonna go over here and this is just gonna be you know a blank text file there now I have output so now this is where the fun begins of course we're gonna declare an integer and it's gonna be I because you know I is the best integer then we're gonna do a while loop now this um, in the while loop declaration we're just gonna say I is equal to file in dot read and then we want to make sure that either of those are not equal to negative one because um, when you're reading a file negative one means you reached the end of the file and there's nothing else to do so basically we want it to read this and once it gets here we want it to stop instead of just going on into nothingness which is bad because you'll probably get an all pointer exception so um, when you're reading files negative one means the files done and at this point we're gonna do file out dot write i so that's well yeah it's about that simple but the other thing we need to add is finally because uh, with when you're dealing with IO again you're dealing with the native operating system so what you absolutely need to do after you open after you open a, an IO after you declare an IO to a file you have to absolutely make sure to close it because if you don't then you can get certain um, leaks in the virtual machine and memory which are really bad so we're, if it doesn't equal null which is why we said it's null equal we're going to do file in dot close because if we try to close it and it is null then we're going to get an error So we check, make sure, you know, nothing's bad. And then again, we have to try and catch the things associated with closing them. So yeah. So now what this will do, um, so please, guys, but I'll explain it. What, well, what input streams do? They're going to, so it's going to start on this file. And it's going to read this. It's going to read the capital zero. It's going to convert it to one byte, which is its ASCII or um, Unicode interpretation of it. Um, Unicode is the international um, system for um, for um, character character um, storage and like binary, like. Um, a capital H in binary would be zero one zero zero one zero zero zero. It via in ASCII and uh, Unicode, because ASCII predates Unicode. ASCII is an acronym. Uh, unfortunately, I forget what it stands for, but it's the American something, and it's uh, the American interpretation from like bytes to characters. So this is a what is this is a byte string. So it's not reading. O and C E, it's reading the binary um, versions of that in ASCII. So what it's going to do, it's going to read the, it's going to read this, convert it to binary, and put it out here, not binary. It's going to output it. Uh, it's going to output it where it's not binary. It's actually the character again because the system interpretates that certain byte as that character. So I'm just going to run this real quick and continue the explanation. should be done so if we go look at output it's the exact same thing I don't notice any difference so um now there are certain um dis well th of course uh there are certain disadvantages and advantages of this over the next stream I'll be showing you now um there are two unbuffered streams which is what we're um covering in this episode there's the byte stream and the character stream so bytes deal with strictly the byte interpretation from this to this the, now the problem with that is internationalization. So obviously the encoding on let's say a Spanish computer is completely different from my English computer. 
So um, this merely reads the bytes. So a byte. So certain inter yeah, certain interpretations on my computer might be different from theirs. So if you did this um, byte stream on a Spanish computer, you would not get this at all. You well, yeah, you might get something similar, but you definitely wouldn't get the exact same thing because. Um, their keyboard's different, so what might be R capital O could be there or N with a tilde over it. And so on and so forth with every different character. So it's not um, safe for internationalization. So this time we're just going to clear this out. And we're going to try a different stream. So these are obviously just byte streams. I'm just going to... Um, Uh, I'm just gonna put these over here so we don't have to look at them. Actually, I'm just gonna copy it. So this time, we're gonna do what they call a character stream. So it reads capital O, and when it writes it, it converts it to so it'll stay a capital O in any um in encoding environment. So it is safe for internationalization. Oh, that's not what I want. So what we're gonna do uh, with character streams, the names are just a different, are just a little different, right? You'll have file file reader, and you'll have a file writer. So of course we have to change this to actual file reader and file writer. Now these are basically it's the exact same method as before we, we, which is why I just left it here. We're dealing with the exact same thing as before but instead you know it's a character stream so it's ready for internationalization. What is this? Uh, I don't like warnings. There. So now as you can see, the input is filled with the first stanza of the raven. The output is nothing. So if we ran this, oh, it looks like it's done. It'll now have the same same exact thing, except I mean you can't notice it because obviously I'm on a single computer. But um, if you try to like take this program with the output blank and just put it into a jar file and give it to someone on a completely different computer, you'd obviously be able to see the difference. But for now, I just have to take my word on it. Now that is um, just uh, byte and character streams, which are unbuffered streams. In the next next episode, we'll be going over um, different types of buffered streams and you know the advantages and such about them. But um, this has been again the seventeenth episode. Um, this has been basic I/O streams and. Uh, I'll see you next time, and good programming to you.